Good morning, everybody. And look who's look who's here. It's Greg Hi. Clark. Yay. Greg's Hi there. Here. Oh, yeah. Sarah's still off gallivanting. No, she's not. She's working. She works Saturdays now because she's like doing important stuff like for 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 work, making money so that she can wiki tree more. Oh, so, there you go. So, Greg, how are you today? I'm doing fine. How are you, Mags? I'm doing good. So Greg's not here for any special purpose other than he's just hanging out with yep. with me. So that's fun. We got to say good morning. Lynette was here. Lynette actually turned the lights on for us this morning. Thanks, which was Lynette. very nice of you to do, Lynette. <laughs> uh, know why they left us in the dark. Um, Patricia Jackson is here from Kentucky. John Tyner is here from the great uh, island of Ireland. Uh, let's see. Lynette Jester. Hillary is uh, everybody here. Uh-oh. Hillary is uploading a photo. Uh -oh. Greg, we got to make sure we don't oh, no, miss another Hillary's one? photo. Dude, I better reload that page. <laughs> She's doing, we're doing pets. Um, let's see. And let's see. Janet Lane. And Janine. Hey, Janine. Janine. Iselman. Let's see. Uh Betsy Co. Hey, Betsy. Betsy's back nice. again. Are you not doing music this morning again? It was fun to have Betsy here last week. She's a regular. Oh, uh, I didn't funny. notice. I haven't looked at all the photos, but we might have a picture from Betsy for pets, maybe. maybe. Uh, Thomas Kernelein is here. Good morning. And yeah, uh, let's see. Tommy from Tommy the Bayou Buck. State. What's the, from the Bayou State. Yes. Buch. <laughs> Did you just say Buch? Buch, as if it was uh, like with the German pronunciation, but I'm not sure if he uses that or not. Yeah. I think Buck sounds kind of cool. Probably. Uh, let's see. Have I missed anybody? June. June Butka. Hey, hey June. See, there you go. You can say Butka. Butka. June Butka. She's got <laughs> some answers this morning on some stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So we're good. We're caught up. Hey, mm -hmm. everybody. Morning. Yeah. Oh, did everybody, for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, yes. are you like Happy American Thanksgiving to, to you folks? Are you still trying to walk off your turkey? I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still oh, yeah, celebrate. You, you 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 got the double Thanksgiving in, didn't you, Megs? Yeah, I get to celebrate Thanksgiving twice. I get to have turkey twice. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, uh, I have to let my Finnegan in for a moment. So, because the the theme of the week was pets, so here's my pet Finnegan. That's he's the a bit photo theme of the week. What's that? That's at the photo theme of the week. I know exactly. That's why I thought I would show him off. Ah. And get he was crying line. under the desk a little while ago yes. because he has visitors visiting. He's got visitors, but he's sh shut off from them. Yeah, yeah. He so it's their time to eat, friends. and he would eat all of their food, give them the choice. He would eat all <laughs> their food? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they eat, you know, when they, you know, they have to be bribed to eat, so they get the really good mushy stuff, wet, wet food. and But he will eat anything, and he eats, he would hoover up their their food in 30 seconds Hoover. and leave them vacuum uh, up. <laughs> I've seen dogs like that. Guess what, Greg? What's that? We have a question of the week this week. We have a question. What's the yeah. question? We have a question of the week this week. Uh, and I noticed that uh, people are talking about having turkey. Mm -hmm. Rainbow trout yesterday. Cool. Nice. Oh, John, quick. Run, get, get another buffoon. Quick. <laughs> yes, hurry up. So the question of the week is, how is what has researching your family history made you thankful? So there are lots of great answers. And I say that every time. Mm -hmm. uh, Anita Alexander gave one of the most heartfelt ones. It's some of my ancestors were enslaved. Mm -hmm. Some were killed. Many were split and separated from family members as evidenced by the lack of surname links. Mm -hmm. However, enough survived for me to thrive and do the research to learn the truths and share the knowledge with all the relatives. I love that answer. Love that, that answer. Yeah. Um, doing research has shown me the many hardships of my ancestors. So that was a, a thread that went throughout the answers of the week as people were talking about how lucky we are and how people living today really don't realize how lucky they are because they haven't done the kind of research that genealogists do to find out the stories of their family's paths. So that was, that was from Alexis Nelson. Um, she's talking about Jane Walker, uh, who is her great grandmother. 
she left Ireland during the potato famine, uh, probably came over on one of those uh, what they called coffin ships. Mm -hmm. uh, she died of yellow fever at 39 and another great grandmother, second great grandmother died a few days after childbirth. There are so many more things. I had no idea before doing research. Uh, I cannot help but be thankful the more I know, especially when it comes to the foods and modern machine medicines, modern machines too, uh, available and feeling blessed today. That's kind of that's kind of like the the overall thing. Dieter here is talking about you know how the fact that we're living through two years of a a pandemic now and really uh, wish that more people would do family research to realize how good they actually have it today instead of always complaining uh, and talking everything down. I agree with that. The, here's a cool one. I recently read a memoir that had been written by one of my cousin's grandmothers, who I guess is a cousin. Anyway, it was amazing to read about her upbringing and her struggles, even more so that she lived down the highway from here in an area that is now a suburban Chicago land. To me, what, what really stuck out was reading about how the little things mattered so much. Getting to eat a piece of candy, which was rare. Sitting around and washing clothes took all day. I don't know. Sitting around took all day, as well as washing clothes took all day. I'm not sure about that one, but... Mm. Uh, the connectedness and gratefulness of the smallest things really struck a chord. So that's kind of like the the overall theme today. Um, there were a couple. Um, this was a fun one. Christine Miller said, researching my family has made me incredible thankful for uh, those whose shoulders I stand on. Grandpa John, who served at Iwo Jima, great grand." Great, great grandma who stood up in court to tell how she was abused by my third great grandpa. Uh, and she wasn't going to take it anymore. That's pretty big. Mm. Uh, my great grandpa who took on a struggling man in a 50-50 handshake to run the farm for him, giving him half the profits for his work. That's pretty cool. My great grandfather who served as a patriot in the Revolutionary War. My great, great grandma's Quaker grandfathers who assisted the, in the Underground Railroad. My great, great grandmother who raised five children on her own after her husband left her and her grandfather who served in the War of 1812. And my great, great grandfather who married his brother's widow to ensure her and their five nieces and nephews, his five nieces and nephews were provided for. I stand on the shoulders of giants. That's, you know, mm -hmm. coming to realize that there's a lot of stuff we have to be thankful for. Um, and Eric Weddington just says, it, I'm thankful that I'm not my past or my family's past. It's good to see how far I've come in a lifetime over the generations. And so it, saying that how far he's come in a lifetime and over the generations, again, we're carrying through that, 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 that thing of feeling thankful that we aren't living in the times of our ancestors. Even if we had a time machine, would you stay? Would you, would you, which, where would you go if you had a time machine, Greg? Oh my. Wow. Well, it's funny. I, I just typed this somewhere. I can't remember even where it was, but I think if I had a time machine, I might go back to say 1920 and prevent the destruction of all those Irish records from <laughs> in the archives. Do you, do you think you would be able to talk those Irish rebels? I don't know. Night? I don't know, but you know, um, because I have I have Irish, well, I have Irish uh, ancestry in my biological as well as my adoptive family, and it's a brick, you know, I just can't get past 1800, and it's just so frustrating, you know, especially on the French Canadian side, you can go back to like 1500 and something. Yeah, yeah, you, you can. know, and All those records it. were there; they kept good records. The Catholics were so good. You, yeah. the, you Catholics are so good about keeping those <laughs> records. The, right. And the other thing would be to go back and prevent some of the carnage of the Civil War oh. to preserve those records as well. Yeah, I think yeah, I would yeah. want to go to Andersonville and shut that place down too, mm -hmm. the uh, prison camp. So lots of stuff. Time machine, uh, Greg. You have a TARDIS? I have a TARDIS. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I don't have my TARDIS mug with me, but. Ah! <laughs> um, and I noticed that June. Oh, said John, John's appreciating my, my uh, suggestion. <laughs> reading my late letter, my late mother-in-law's letters to her from her teenage years when she died this year. Sad, happy, but enlightening story. 
Um, let's see. Surprised to find Revolutionary War. That's from Renee Reese Murray. Mm -hmm. Cool. Jacob Hyatt. Timothy Eastman. Uh, let's see. June would go to a time machine to my sec second great grandparents' times. Why, June? Why would you do that? Oh, and Lynette says she would go back and get rid of all the prison camps forever, all of them, ever. Mm. And wouldn't it be fun to go back to, like, mm. uh, say, Roman times and say, you know, the whole <laughs> slavery issue really is, is it's, you got to figure something else out. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this just isn't the way. Or even further back from that. I mean, th I think slavery was an, an issue much further back than that. It's hmm. crazy. The, the spoils of war. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The I, I love Leanne Deer. Besides the fact that I'm not a wartime refugee or running away from religious persecution, I'm incredibly thankful for hot running water <laughs> at my beck yes. and call, so to speak, and clothes washing machines. I'm over the moon about living in the age of antibiotics. And the big screen TVs, I absolutely adore in the living room. I think that's like the best answer. <laughs> if we, if we, we can change that if we decide. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and again, the, like I said, the Diane uh, Gulut. See, I picked one I don't can't pronounce. Compared to the hardships my ancestors faced, and then Edward says I'm grateful to to have learned. There's lots more on our Facebook feed. Whoop. Wow. Let's see. We don't want to see. Awen always says that she wants people to watch us while we're watching. June. <laughs> June Stern's book said, thankful that my ancestors were caring, giving people who felt family and friends were more important than money. Their stories in nice. the papers are amazing to read. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Bob Nickel says, neither of my parents' lines had been explored to any serious extent until I began searching in 1977. I can now say that I have both lines traced confidently back to the 17th century in Scotland, Ireland, and Germany, with many leads beckoning beyond that. Cool. Talking about going to the archives and snail mail in the early days. Crazy, mm. crazy, crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Betsy Coe says she'd go back to the 1940s so I could meet my grandparents. Oh, well, that's cool. Mm. Up, Thomas Kernelline. Uh -huh, yeah. The 1890 census. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Travel mm. across the ocean in the belly of a ship. Glad that I didn't have to do that. Uh, oh, no. Raquel Guglielm Guglielmo says that her grandmother went on a ship, gave birth in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Woo, doggy. Wow. Doggy. That's an adventure. Can you imagine being pregnant, I'm sorry, you probably can't, but can you imagine no. being pregnant on a ship and having morning sickness on top of that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Thankful that death isn't around every corner for our children. Kind to get to know, kind kind of getting to know the grandparents, their strengths, coming to America, leaving family and friends. So the, the questions that we had in all of our groups, here comes AON again telling us to watch ourselves. And let's see, we've got more in the other one. Thankful for birth control. Every time I see a relative who had a dozen children. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. yeah uh -uh. Talk about being <laughs> pregnant on a ship. Um, third great grandfather, this is from Cheryl Cock. Uh, great grandfather in Ontario had died when taken prisoner of war. If he had died, I wouldn't be here. Right. So that's an interesting mm -hmm. view of it is saying, hey, you know, if if this if he had died while he was there, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Uh, Keith Cook, I'm grateful to my great grandparents who came over safely from Sweden. They both uh, they gave birth to their first son in Brooklyn, New York, and made their way to Massachusetts, got married and then had their other children, including my grandfather. Cool. Um, let's see. Learning more. I just like learning more. I feel the knowledge of my family is so fragmented because no one talks to each other, which was an interesting thing. Um, and another person who, and this kind of hits home for me because my father mm -hmm. served in Korea. I just found a fourth cousin who's still listed as missing in action from the Korean War. Wow. Yeah, they know his death date. 
So they know that much, but his remains were never found. Mm. Broke my heart. Uh, Robin, post when he was, when, when his death date was and where it was, mm. was he with Joe Sign or that'd be interesting to find out. I guess we could look. Fourth cousin, that's Robin Hoff Casper, fourth cousin in the Korean War, if anybody wants to go and look for that. Uh, grateful for stories about my grandparents and great grandparents. I'm so grateful that I don't have to work in the mines of Michigan. Oh man. So, and there's a, a great link there. Yeah. Was that a, is that a free space page? That's, that looks interesting. Let's look at that. Yeah. Oh. There's a whole page. A whole page. On that. Interesting. Wow. I didn't know there were lots of coal mines in Michigan, I guess. Hmm. Oh, what a great page. Wow, that is amazing. I well, love that's... WikiTree in that you can, yeah. and their torches are lit. Huh. Driver Boys, Michigan Coal Industry. Isn't that interesting? What a great space page. Yeah. That's so much fun about WikiTree is that you can create these yeah. incredible space pages just to talk about stuff. Now, you know what? What a coincidence! I was just listening to a podcast yesterday about yeah. the the Westway mine disaster, which happened in uh, Nova Scotia. Um, actually, the day before our daughter was born. Oh wow! I remember. I remember here. You know, being in the, in the hospital. You know, in the in the room, and the radio was on talking about it after the fact. Um, and but, anyways, this podcast goes through everything that led up to it and you know the mismanagement and stuff and it's and the conditions and it's just very it was a difficult i i i can't imagine being a coal miner and all the things they had to put uh, all the dangers that you have to put up with there it is it is and and how mm -hmm. you know people say we shouldn't regulate this we shouldn't regulate oh. that but i tell you some of the regulations put forth for the coal industry have really made a, a big difference in yeah people's lives uh, let's see, going on down. This is a really, really long one here, but it's fun to read. Mm -hmm. uh, learn more than I've ever wanted to learn. Uh, <laughs> grateful that in the 1600s, the King of Sweden beheaded the cousin of one of my wife's ancestors instead of my wife's ancestor. Ah. <laughs> uh, grateful to be living in the 21st century. Thankful for what? I'm not religious. Oh, wait, I'm thankful for society is not religious anymore. I'm not sure I understand hmm. that one because <laughs> um, I don't know. There's you can be yeah. thankful even if you're not religious. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't know what thankfulness has to do specifically yeah. with religion. Yeah. Uh, thankful for my ancestors sacrifices. I know the most were un un uneducated and some didn't even know how to write their names. A few got dealt a bad, very bad hand in life. And it makes me appreciate the opportunities that we have to be here. So that's that's generally it. Um, let's Maybe. see. John's got uh, found my great grandmother's brother stayed in South Africa after the World War and died there in 1945. He had a son in 1903 who died in England. That's fun. Or that's something mm -hmm. to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. June says, my dad served in Korea. Uh, my son served on the same base during his tour of duty, duty retiring seven same years base. ago. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Fun. Fun. So uh, let's see. Do, do you have any people that you're related to for your notables? I do, in fact. Uh, Jim Thorpe is actually a seventh cousin twice removed, believe it or like not. Like a bloodline, not just a connection, but a bloodline. A bloodline, yes. That's yeah. crazy cool. That is crazy. Like, I wasn't sure um, if there'd be any connections, but but he has, uh, He's he's got French Canadian roots when you go far enough back, and then that's, that's how Fun. I connect. Yeah. Fun. I'm not gonna pronounce any of these names. <laughs> Where is, uh, yeah. So Thomas Kernelline, don't, don't, if you've got better pronunciation, jump on it. Oh. So, and the other thing I wanted to point out, let's see, yeah. if you go back here, there's a lot of times that we don't talk about this, but people are answering the question as well. Yes. So Roger Strong says, I'm 17 degrees from Sequoia Gist, mm -hmm. which is my closest uh, connection. Okay. Uh Houston T. He, Joseph Brandt, surprised that there aren't any more close. Hmm. That's cool. Pamela Parker, 
is Pamela here? No, that was, was that Pamela? Uh, Wilma Mankiller is 19th. Tehe Houston, 13th. Jim Thorpe. So you can probably see if you and Aaron are related. Yes. Uh, yeah. Was Aaron on Team Canada? Because I went through the Team Canada list. I'm I'm related to about half of them, which I guess kind of makes sense. Are you related and, to me? I don't know. I don't. I, have we ever checked to see? I don't know if we have. Chris Fariolo and I are, are cousins. Oh, Maybe. I'm so sorry. <laughs> did you see? Are, did you see Chris's pictures for um, his um, Thanksgiving meal? Yes, they were wonderful. I wanted to go and to New Hampshire so bad. I know that lasagna looked good. Oh. Lasagna for Thanksgiving, Chris Ferriello. Yes. But the oh. lasagna was the primo, and then he still got turkey dinner as the segundo. So that's I just, know I that's know. the way to live. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, um, you're doing it right, Chris. <laughs> Chris is like, hey, did you bring us any leftovers? Were yeah, there any leftovers? Right. I would say not. Oh, he um, take Tommy, Tommy Buck's got some. He's got 18 degrees from. Look he's got that. it listed. I love this in order. Wow. That, that my engineer's brain is like I like very it. very structured, yeah. Yeah. So Sequoia Gist is yours too, Tommy. Uh and Jan Janine Lee uh Iselman, whoops. She says Jim Thorpe's first wife, Iva, is my sixth cousin oh. three times removed. Okay. Cool. And she says that's through her Dentons. Dentons. Uh Judy Adden, has got them all listed here. Mm. Frank Blankenship. 27 degrees from Sitting Bull. Mm -hmm. There was also some discussion about um, Crazy Horse. Is that the oh. right? Uh, people were wondering why Crazy Horse wasn't on the list. Oh, okay. And I believe, I believe that we found out. Did that, we have him? No, because he didn't have, he had one daughter who died very young. Oh. And there's no other, there's no other way to connect. Yeah. And apparently his uh, profile doesn't have a lot of stuff on it either. So oh. Joseph Brandt's our first one. He lived in uh, Ohio near the Cuyahoga River, mm. present day Cleveland, Ohio. So um, you know how we do use their naming conventions, not ours, mm -hmm. when we do locations. I wonder what that area was called in yeah. his language that that would be. And I wonder if, you know, yeah. when when you type in a place, a location, yes, it, we use Family Search's um, location to input that information. Right. Does Family Search have the Native American names for the locations? Oh, no. that's an interesting question. That because, is, I've never thought about that till right but now. But wouldn't like their history wasn't all of their history oral history? Yes, like, they, they didn't have a written language, did they? Like, I, I'm not sure. I'm just. Well, yeah, there there is written language, but uh, the majority were pictorial stuff. Right. And the oral history, the oral traditions. That's that's how things were handed down yeah. in the throughout the the uh, Native Americans. So Joseph was a Mohawk, um, mm -hmm. and he was also a United Empire loyalist. Yeah. So because well, we have Brant County. Um, yeah. And, yes, yeah. we do. In Ontario, yeah, we do, and, yes. and Brantford, the city of Brantford, yeah, right. So yes, see, th 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 there's a pronunciation here, Thomas Kernelon. You can see that Tyendanega. Tyendanega. Now, and go. I have a friend who taught me that it's the second second part of the name, not necessarily the second syllable, is where. So it would be it would be Yeah. Ta the so where the in, what was it the inflection the inflection yes yeah. <laughs> so he has a great profile yeah nice beautiful yeah. list of honors he was mm -hmm. uh Tyendinaga, Mohawk mm -hmm. ter Territory in Ontario mm -hmm. Brantford you said there we go that. and County County Brant, there it is yeah there it is Joseph mm -hmm. Brant Hospital Joseph mm -hmm. Brant Museum Brant Street in Burlington uh, designated a national national historic person. How cool is that? That's nice. very cool. Let's see who is our next one. Okay. Uh, Chief. Oh my. Go ahead. Uh, to carry. To carry. Go ahead, Greg. What? Go ahead. Habibuiga? How's that? 
Um, Thomas Kernelein, and it, we we were talking about whether we would use the indigenous place names. The answer is no, mm -hmm. that the family search uh, thing that populates our fields would not. But uh, Thomas says that he always tries to use the indigenous place names, but they can be difficult to find and family search doesn't have them saved. Yeah. yeah. That's the thank you, Thomas. Yeah. And uh, June says she's uh, 18 degrees or 18th cousin, 18th cousin. I was going to say 18 degrees Celsius. Boy, wow. <laughs> that's it's minus seven here. What's it like? Yeah, in this place? that's about the same here. Uh, minus Chief, six, according to my Apple Watch. Minus six, mine's <laughs> minus seven. So we're not too bad. No. Chief Habaguija, glory of the morning, queen of the Winnebago's. Winnebago's. Huh. Native American. She right. was a Wisconsinite. Mm -hmm. And was was Ho Chunk. Another mm -hmm. nice um Jonathan Carver ascended the Fox River, arrived at Doty Island, reported here the queen who resides over this mm -hmm. Winnebago tribe instead of Sockham received me with great civility and entertained me in a very distinguished manner. We know her as Hopo Coca. Uh, mistranslated as Glory of Morning, hmm. a Winnebago woman who married the French officer Sabrevois. See, I should be able to do that. <laughs> De Carry, De Carry. Uh, and started <laughs> distinguished Decora family. Oh, nice. Huh. Another great profile. Let's jump on. Okay. Sequoia Gist, who is my closest. Oh, okay. Um, and she's Cherokee, so that that uh, okay. that makes sense. I have some cousins who are Cherokee. And where are the Cherokees? Where do they originate from? South Carolina, North Carolina mountains, oh, down okay. through Georgia, uh, a little bit of Alabama. The what is it? The I'm trying to remember the tribe in in Alabama, but uh, okay. the Appalachian mountain ranges, okay. uh, that area, the Piedmont area of South Carolina. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. And then there, there is still a Cherokee, North Carolina, where they have, there is some land there, but the Cherokee were notoriously put on the Trail of Tears and sent out to Oklahoma. So there's Cherokee areas in Oklahoma now as well. Mm. Um, let's see. Just, oh, look, look at what Thomas is doing. Oh, my goodness. He just wow. added something. Wow. That's... I am very impressed. Yeah. What, which profile did you do that to? To Joseph Brantz? No, to... to some, um... Here, let me uh, refresh. Let's see. Menasha with Winnebago. No, no, that's not the right one. It's... No. Was it this one? Which one was it we were talking about that was... It was, um, yeah, was it? it was Brant. It was, we started off with Brant, or, but I think it was Habuj, Hab, Habuguiga, Chief. Hab oh, that was way better than the way I pronounced it. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. Did he, did he put it there? I believe so. Menasho. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Wil Wilma Mankiller. Um, who is uh, more current, 1945, 1945. born okay. in, and this this has to be, I can't pronounce, Tahlequah, Tal, 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 Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, she was Cherokee. Uh, she was uh, the daughter of Charlie Mankiller and Irene, uh, Clara Irene Sitton, born on the 18th of November in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Her father was a full-blooded Cherokee. Her mother was of Dutch Irish descent. Wilma was the middle child of seven. Eleven. She spoke eleven. Of 11? Middle of eleven. Did I say seven? You said seven. I'm reading dyslexic. You just I need to add a team. couple more on each end. Yeah, <laughs> she spoke of early life as being influential in her quest to preserve and build the Cherokee Nation. Nice. Wow. Oh, fun candidate for the being on the twenty dollar bill. Oh, nice. Nice. She was well, the I mean, first it, woman to be the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, and she built on rebuilding. Hmm. 
And yeah. Thomas Kernelon is going to work on those, getting the names right. That's great. One I did, or we haven't looked at. Oh, no. Oh, he's the one he changed actually is coming up, I guess. Oh, good. The Cherokee Salagi? call themselves Salagi? I would say it's Salagi. Yeah. I'm not sure how close that is. Thomas will tell us because he's good at pronunciation. Oh, fun. Alexis Nelson actually has been to some of the mm. places where uh, Wilma was speaking. That's cool. Yeah. Well, Let's you know, on. It, it's nice that we re recognize her because it's important. Um, people that, you know, continue the tradition and, you know, keep things going for, for the cultures that. Yes. Those oral traditions. Yeah. So having somebody that was a speaker. Now That's I'm cool. not, this is Nez Pierce. <laughs> Nez Pierce. So Wallaway. Pierce knows? What? What? Yeah. Wallaway, England. Um, and I can't pronounce the tribe name. I'm, you know, that's what a great, what great pictures, too. too oh, wow. That's a cool picture. Look at that. It's gorgeous. He uh, was uh, a chief in 1840. In Oregon, uh, his name translates roughly to thunder rolling down a mountain. Hmm. But he was known as Joseph, like his father. Tukakas. Uh, Tukakas, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Took the name Joseph after being baptized. Hmm. Uh, Presbyterian missionary Henry Spaulding recorded in his journal on April 12th that Baptiste, our sweet baby Henry Hart today, also Joseph's baby, by the name of Ephraim, Joseph had several wives and many children, some of his own, others that he adopted, which is a really cool thing about uh, Indian uh, Native American culture is adopting people into your family. I think that's mm. that's a great tradition. Great profiles. Yeah. Someone went Lots to a of lot maps. of work on this. That's amazing. Oh, and I love maps. I love the maps. You're such a geek. I know. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful picture. Chief Joseph never saw um, his land oh. after, uh, and he died in 1904. Mm. He died of a broken, a heart. broken heart. Wow. I, oh, yeah. To talking about being glad we live mm -hmm. in, in today's. Yeah. So Tecumseh. Okay. Tecumseh Shawnee. I can pronounce that fairly easily. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and he was born in Chillicut in the Shawnee Nation. Okay. And if I click on that, will it show me where that is? I was just going to ask. Yeah. Look. Because um, we have Tecumsehs in Ontario as well. That's Ohio. How cool. Okay. So um, it's a part of the uh, Native American project. Well, he, look, he died in Ontario, in Upper Canada. He did. Yeah. Moravian town. Uh, oh, in the middle of the War of 1812. Is that supposed to be Oxford? Uh, probably. Let me yeah. see. Kent, Kent County. Uh, mm. so no, Oxford was... is another county. I don't know. Orford? Orford might be up here. I will just Google that on the side. Google that. Greg, Google it. <laughs> oh, look at Thomas. You're making me. Oh, my gosh. He's amazing. How would you even? Oh my gosh! Look at this. He's he's got the keyboard on his computer. I, I was gonna I was because gonna say one of the things the I was most impressed with is how he got all those special characters. Yes, <laughs> that's too cool. So Tecumseh was probably born in 1768. Um, he was uh, born to Shawnee parents. Exact birthplace is not documented, but probably at the Shawnee town of uh, Chillicut on the Shota River. I, I think that they pick some of these these people so just so they can hear Sarah or me or you. Well, I was going to say the part of Sarah names. mispronouncing names this week will be played by Mags. <laughs> yeah. He had six siblings. Um, he had several wives. Uh, he mm -hmm. focused on preparations to be a warrior then, rather than starting a family. And some accounts say that while living in the Cherokee with the Cherokee, he married a Cherokee woman and fathered a daughter with her. That's claims. Mm -hmm. uh, unsupported claims that he married a woman uh, named Mahandushi and had a son. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. I, it's it's a beautiful <laughs> and wonderful story. And um, wow, in English clothes as well. 
wow, these these profiles have really, really been written well. Yeah. Check that one out. Anybody close to him? Orford yeah. is correct. Yeah, Orford is a place. Yep. Yep. Let's see who is next. Let's see. Tick Zikala Sabonin. And she was born in 1876 and died in 1938. Mm -hmm. uh, South Dakota. She played the the fiddle. Looks like it. Gertrude, yeah. her her red bird, uh, was born mm -hmm. on the Yankton Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Member of the Yankton Dakota Sioux. She was raised by her mother. Uh, let's see. Your father was a Frenchman. Mm -hmm. When she was eight years old, Quaker missionaries visited the reservation, mm -hmm. taking several of the children to Wabash, Indian Indiana, to attend uh, White's Indiana Manual Labor Institute, mm -hmm. despite her mother's disapproval. Now, I mean, and we're talking about we're talking about mm -hmm. a, a legacy that both the U.S. and Canada share, mm -hmm. in that children were taken away from their families and sent to live in. Here they're called residential schools, and in the U.S. they were called Indian schools. Uh, so, uh, which it, it's something that we're trying to figure out how to address as yeah. people living today for yeah. what happened in the past. Um, yeah. She attended the institute until 1887. She was conflicted about the experience and both wrote uh, wrote both of her great joy in learning to read and write and play the violin as well as her deep grief and pain of losing her heritage by being forced to pray as a Quaker mm -hmm. and cut her and hair. Cut her hair. Yeah, that's, um, but boy, that really speaks to what's yeah. going on right now in the world. For sure, yeah. yeah. Thomas is saying that um, her name should be pronounced as Kala Shah, that Kala that Shah. S with the squiggle, the circle over top makes it a SH sound. Thank you very much. Just like Alesh uses that same yes. symbol, right? Yeah, he does. For his S, yeah. So that's a fascinating and, and really ties this this person. Yeah. She really ties in with what the national dialogue is in Canada right now. Yeah. And I've noticed I've noticed a couple of uh, articles and stuff coming up from the States as well. It's, it's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And, yeah. and locating um, these burials that um, yeah. need to be addressed as well. Yeah. Now, so um, her mother was uh, she. Um, her mother was native, and her father was French. Is that, or do I have it backwards? Let's see. Raised by like, her mother, who was uh, na uh, yeah. indigenous. Indigenous, yeah. So in Canada, we call um, like there's a um, whole category Métis, right? Yes. That we for that type of mixed. Uh, it do, is there is there the same distinction to use that word in the states as well no no? no we don't hey jelaine jelaine just joined us jelaine we're talking native american profiles or uh indigenous mm -hmm. profiles all over the the americas mm -hmm. so we were just talking about that but yeah no i don't think that there's a, a designated like mm -hmm. uh, metis uh first nations in the states they don't the, the states also don't have the designation of first nations either they oh yeah so and judy stutz says we have uh Métis. Métis. yeah mm -hmm. let's see who's next you guys are you related to these people chief seattle i can pronounce that one yes but, man <laughs> um, wow yeah 1780 yeah Okay, I'm gonna ha have to look and see where this is. Stuck New Spain, New Spain. Is that like uh, Texas uh, oh. or New Mexico? No, it's not my neighborhood. The, it's not taking me anywhere, so oh, I, I can't it find mean... it. All right, so Chief Seattle, there's a picture. Uh, the, the language does not use capital letters anywhere in its ortho orthography. Uh, orthography <laughs> the names displayed at the top of the profile are attributed to wikitree's system automatically capitalizing given uh, names and are not the correct way to display the name the biography has been edited to reflect the standard orthography which renders did you write all this up thomas he 
that would yep, be nice. look jelaine Did says he? thomas worked on the profile uh, excellent way to go wonderful that's very impressive yes thomas oh wow so he was a washingtonian uh, born between 1780 and 1786, the name he was called at birth and his childhood is unknown. Uh, he received his name, uh, the name of maternal ancestor, in a ceremony when he reached adulthood. Nice. Does Thomas this, does Thomas have a way of pronouncing that on the profile? Yeah. And Seattle is named after him. And Stoke, the name of the place is Stoke. 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 But, but you have to do it with Stoke. 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 Can you cool. first slip Stoke? Um, and Seattle is named after him. New Spain is uh I don't Stoke. I can't even go there. Right. Okay, I'll second. go I'll go there. You go there. Okay. I'll try and go there. Nice. So he has a beautiful beat me there. <laughs> profile that Thomas Kernelline has worked on. Um Huh. Seattle was said to have been born with an inherited stigma from an incident in which his paternal grandmother was captured in a raid and enslaved by a tribe from the north. Though she was later recovered and returned, the taint of the incident carried forward. Hiding or disassociating Seattle from his stigma may be one reason for the differing accounts of his origins. In any case, Seattle was born in Duwamish tribal lands then claimed by Spain as the territory of New Spain. That's it. Thomas, what a great job. Yeah. So Megs, our wiki treeers are amazing because by the time I have found found the answer, they already three people have already answered it. So New Spain is what is basically Mexico now as well as what was called New California and Spanish Louisiana, which it does include Texas, like I had suggested and uh wow almost all the way up to to the great lakes that that high so wow. all the area that used to be owned by spain before um france and britain took over wow yeah. that's and its capital was mexico city or where mexico city is now wow beautiful yeah. profile talks about his wives and his children a lot of times with uh, some of the native indigenous um, ancestry, it's hard to identify families. And this is done really mm. well here. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. So on to Teehee Houston. Mm -hmm. um, and Thomas, for that profile, he's Marta Johnson, a fellow Seattleite, is uh, given great work on that the last biography we were looking at okay so houston boy we're almost out of time when we wow. got pictures to look at uh so houston Benga Tihi, born in 1874 died in 1953 uh he is also a cherokee uh fun mm -hmm. oh it, there's not a lot of stuff on his profile well, I can imagine they'd be exhausted after writing the other ones. They were so yeah, impressive. they're so, so very impressive. <laughs> wow, and Jim Thorpe. Everybody has a relationship to Jim Thorpe, Yay. including Greg Clark. How yes. close are you, Greg? Seventh cousin, twice removed. Now it's interesting. I went down and I, I checked because you know when you first click on that link, um, it tells you your connection, right? So I'm 16 degrees away from him. Um, but then I always checked, I changed the radio button to, um, I'm going to go uh, there. Wait, wait, you wait, go, you go do it. You do it. Hey, I'm going there. So I've got my, my connection. 18 degrees. Yeah. So yeah, the next I thing I always, here, I, can click I click this. that. Yes. I connect to a common ancestor and then hit find and see if it's. Oh, wow. A uh, 38, but I have a, we, we are actually related. Okay. That's crazy. Through you my, are a cousin. Wow. through my Templeton's. So, you we know, what I always love to do is I always, when I, I love to go, use the alternative view. So I scrolled. Oh, okay. go ahead. From that last page there. Um, I always like to go down and hit the alternative view. Yeah. Oh, so now if you're direct, if it's a direct relationship, it's just one line down and then one line back up. But when, when you're not directly related by blood, it, you know, it gives you the sort of the steps. Have you seen that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I kind I think that's kind of cool. Zoom in. So for so, anyways, what I thought was interesting is that going through the steps, you know, 
it must it must take a shortcut from my relationship. Well, it would have been for you too, because you went from 16 steps to 32 steps when you're directly real, right? Yeah, fun. So there's some shortcut, <laughs> which is, I don't know. So Jim Thorpe is the last one. And what a great profile this one is. Mm -hmm. um, he was a SAC and Fox Nation. And if you don't know who Jim Thorpe is, um, an incredible athlete. Mm -hmm. um, Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's not, uh, yeah, it's a government school. Right. To immerse its students into mainstream mm -hmm. Euro-American culture. Uh, yeah. Well, like we said, they're, we're, we're trying to address that history here in Canada. Great, great profile of Jim Thorpe. Mm -hmm. uh, highly decorated. Wonderful. Possibly the greatest athlete of the 20th century. Won gold medals in the 1912 Olympics, the decathlon, pentathlon, and played professional football and baseball. So, yeah, he was Pretty an impressive. Olympian. Yeah. Yeah. He was Olympian, yeah. Uh, great. great. Um, Thomas Kernelein says tribal identity names in the indigenous language, various other relations to members already enrolled, etc. Those are some of the most helpful and expanding connections. Nice. Judy says I'm 16. And can you share your screen? Or me? do you want me to share it? The photos. Oh, I can uh let me let me uh let's see make make sure I'm in the right spot here. The, uh, uh, do, 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 do. I'm gonna remove mine. Okay. Images, there we are. Okay, and I'm going to share, click share, share screen. Uh, and I want this. We should have done here. just the entire talk today on Native Americans. Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Uh, I, yes. You want to zoom in a bit? Yeah, I will. Isn't Greg doing a good job? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. Okay. So here we are. So uh, the first one, so the theme is pets. And here we have an old family picnic photo. So there I see one big dog. I thought I saw other dogs, but no, it was just uh, shadows in the background. But look at that. Very nice. And you, that looks you, like a tin type. I was going to say you called that a tin type. Yeah. Yeah. Because so how old the, do you think that picture is? Yeah. You can tell the tin types. Oh, they have those striations and stuff. Yeah. 1896. That's very cool. That's pretty late for a tin type too. Yeah, Humes, the Humes family awards. Or Birch, you can't, Birch you can't see this, but somebody's yelling, "Yay, Greg!" Yay, Greg! Oh, thanks, Lynette. <laughs> okay, and then here's Hal with one of the birds. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That's that is great. cute. Very cute. Parakeet. Um, par parakeet. <laughs> that, that too. Was in 1955 in Decatur, Illinois. Tinker in the green gauge tree. Oh, lost. Oh, needs Superman to come and save her. Or a and that's from Norfolk in 1963. Very cool. Pearl McCleary and her dog Red. Oh, look at that. 1904. Derek and Shadow. <laughs> you think Shadow's trying to wake Derek up? Maybe, yeah. Or, yeah, well, his eyes are open, so yeah, he might be, yeah. And Derek's are not. Derek's are not, yeah, it's time to go. Come on, buddy, wake up. 1994. Penelope and Chance. Oh, look at that. Sweet, yeah. Now, we don't let our dogs on the beds or on the couches. I, I don't either, no. But I can see, like, they're so cute. I can see the temptation to do that. Look at that. 2021. Oh, so that's a recent one. Yeah. Have you posted that? Uh, who posted that? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, doesn't say. Oh. Photos of the week from Sparta yeah. and Tennessee. Don't worry about it. Sparta, mm. White, Tennessee. Mm. John and Misty. Uh, and Bach. And, what's that? And Bach. And Bach. Yes. Look at the piano player there. Yeah, Bach. I can't quite make out whether that's the well-tempering clavier he's got there or not. <laughs> hmm. 
We'll see. Um, from 1966. Back when people wore ties, even when they were relaxing, relaxing at home. <laughs> boy with dog. Look at the curly headed boy with this double button. I used to have a double button coat like that. I bet you were really cute. In were oh. your was your hair as curly and red as that? Uh, I was, never had red hair. No, never, never had red hair. No, no, blondish sort of. But... Janine says that other picture was her picture. Oh, Janine, nice. Okay, where do I see? I can't see who who uploaded them. Should I be able to see that? No, no, no. We'd have to go to the other feed to see. Uh, who okay. Uploaded it. Um, oh, okay. That's neat. That's <laughs> love, crazy. Love the, the bonnet on that one. And the cat. Is there two cats? Two cats. Yeah. From Iowa in 1962. You know who's going to be sorry they missed this one? Oh. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah loves cat. She's going to be jealous. Look at these puppies. Oh, Billy Hutchins. That's sort of like a Huckleberry Finn look. <laughs> yeah. And that was from Oregon in 1927. Click on the next there. There we go. Okay. Oh, again. Master oh. Laddie. Remington Remy on his first day with the family and sleeping under the coffee table. Oh, look at those big paws. You know he's going to grow into that. Oh, into gosh. <laughs> and oh, fun. Rhea the Barn Owl. Wow. That's cool. 2007. Uh, I wonder if the Barn Owl's still around. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, Chai, Chai Dowden. Hal Dowden. Okay. And this is from Texas. No date added to it. Chai. Yeah. Okay. Cleo. From Brooklyn in 1966. I'm trying to think, what's that? Are those toys in the background? Like, is that a toy wagon? Like, Wheels, yeah, right? Yeah. I have a cute picture of my dad and his dog, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't post it. Hmm. Sophie, choose another stick. That's really? a good photo. <laughs> oh, and that's Joan Coptus. Joan See Coptus. down next to 52 mean. Weeks, it has her name listed. Yes, yeah. So some of them do and some don't, eh? Yeah. yeah. That's and a nice your... that's a nice photo. I, I look at the, the blurring in the background. Yeah. So it's like on. a portrait. Yeah. Very nice. Nice work there, Joan. Mr. Bill with the teddy bears. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bill's the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Mr. Bill. That was an 84. Uh, it doesn't say here. In Tennessee. Brother Rex with Pepper, our family pet. <laughs> Boy's life. So that's 64. That's that's a while. Is that still a magazine that's around these days? What? Which one? Life? Boy, Boy's life. I don't know. It's not one that I ever got up here. <laughs> uh, Pandora the cat. Halloween. With, with wow. <laughs> with its mummy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Greg, oh, mommy, 2021. Uh, Win oh, Winifred Ward and her cat. Wow. Okay, you want to take a guess on the year? I want to say 1910. Hmm. Good. Yeah. I was thinking maybe a little bit before, but maybe let's see. What is it? 1902. <laughs> Okay, so we're both right. Yeah. <laughs> I think when you're getting that far back, within 10 years is is on. <laughs> June Butka says Boy's Life is a scout magazine. Oh, is it? Okay. And Lynette was guessing. Lynette, you would have won. She guessed. Wow, yes. Years. Way to go, Lynette. Okay. So this is from 20, 1924 in Western Australia. Peg and a big dog. That's from Peg Thorne. Peg Thorne. Neat. That is a big dog. Young Bob Troman, Toman and his dogs. His dog. So is this Bob? This is, Bob. is that is Bob is Bob the one who posted it? That's a good question. 
and that's a uh, Boston Terrier. Do you know who loves Boston Terriers? Cindy Engel. Oh, really? Yeah, we should send From her Cindy's her. list. Yeah, Cindy. <laughs> Cindy has three or four, and she's always talking about how they're getting doing stuff with her. They're like Isn't her that children. Neat? Yeah. So that's from 1925. So could be. He'd be very old. So I'm going to guess it's Bob Jr. that posted Bob's that. Bob's son of Bob? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Susie, Susie McMurray and her Coley. And that was taken in 1945. In New York. Casey. My, my daughter. daughter with Amanda. And this is from Amanda... Amanda Booker. Bucker. Bucker or Booker. Uh huh. Delete digital drama. <laughs> Not sure what that That's is. That's a baby. That's a kitten. A little kitty. Yeah. Okay. And that was in 2011 in Wash from Washington. And I think that's the end that's of our it. Course. Oh, my goodness. I did not think we were going to even make it before. Look at that. Two minutes to spare. Two minutes to spare. So, how are you doing, Dregs? You got two I'm minutes doing fine. to go. I'm doing fine. Greg is going to hang out with me as often as he can until Sarah gets back. So if you don't like Greg hanging out, you need to be very, very vocal about it. <laughs> he will never come back. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Yeah, so Greg's going to be hanging out with me and helping me out until Sarah gets back, we hope. If he's not here, he's got uh, some duties that he has to do. If you aren't aware, he's the music <laughs> director at his church. So mm -hmm. if something comes up and he's needed at church, to do music then he'll be doing that but yeah. i'm very excited to have you hanging out greg well thanks Meg. it's fun i enjoy yeah, it, it is. we need to get you a, a better shirt though i mean well this is, what do you mean a better shirt this is it's a great orange shirt. yes it's orange it's the right color but we need yeah, to so we're, we're here. Here. okay so leap into math so i was um of course i was a math teacher and then i've been part of the math association the provincial math association in ontario and in 2016 i was the co-chair for the provincial math conference we had almost 2000 people there. And I got to make the name the conference. So because it was 2016 and a leap year, we our conference theme was leap into math. Only mathematicians would be doing that. It was fun. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have you around and I'm sure everybody else is. Chris, Chris is very excited. He's got to be. <laughs> Chris is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he goes from insulting me to praising me and, you know. You know, Chris is that way, but we, like that. we want Chris in our good side because we want some of that lasagna next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So have a great week. We enjoyed being here and we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Greg. Oh, you're welcome, Max. Thanks for inviting let me. me. Get, let me get my stuff up here so I can, I can I'm going to try and play us out. Okay. See you guys later. See ya. <laughs>